Well, I started growing blueberries in 1984, and I moved to this site that we're presently on in 1990 and started planting blueberries here. Our farmland actually is in three different counties. So we're in Alachua, Putnam, and Marion County, slightly. So, um, but the Alachua part is part of Island Grove, the town. And it was named that uh, when it became a town because of all the different muck farms and different waterways that were surrounding this area coming out of Loch Lusa and Orange Lake. Uh, so it was kind of a surrounded area, like an island. And so there, there was groves here as well, citrus groves. So they called it Island Grove. It was actually a family endeavor. My sister, her husband, and my wife and I, the four of us, started a farm here. There was another farm down the street owned by uh, Bud Strang and his family. And in 1995, we merged and formed Island Grove Ag Products. It was certainly an emerging business. The blueberry business was in Florida back in the 90s. It was growing rapidly and we just wanted to take advantage of that. So we started a blueberry nursery and we uh, partnered up with the University of Florida to help them evaluate and release some of their new varieties. Through its work with several premier breeding programs, like the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences, Island Grove's Blueberry Nursery is helping to increase the production and knowledge of new and experimental blueberry varieties, providing the best selection of blueberry plants for a range of climate zones. Well, we've tried very hard to, to be good stewards of the ag industry in general. And so we slowly converted this farm to 100% organic. And so that, that helped us a lot in, in taking care of our micro environment that we have here. Island Grove operates a 200 acre organic blueberry farm in its Alachua Putnam County location. Another 100 acres of conventional blueberries are in production in DeSoto County. Today, the whole operation is managed by Ken's nephew-in-law, Jared Gross, who took over the reins of Island Grove Ag Products when Ken retired in 2020. Actually, I started out as Island Grove working in the farms. Back in 2007, I left the construction industry, just took over farming operations and learning the business through him. He was a great mentor, taught me kind of everything from ground up, building farms all the way to where we are today. Since 2011, Island Grove has been enrolled in the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services Best Management Practices, or BMP, program. The farm began utilizing drip irrigation to maximize efficiency. Based on recent mobile irrigation lab testing done through FDAX, Island Grove's drip irrigation systems have delivered huge water savings, exceeding the farm's expectations. Drain tile systems under the fields help minimize runoff and grass buffers throughout the property provide filtration, preventing nutrient runoff into the surrounding wetlands. This particular farm in Hawthorne has a little over 700 acres. 200 of it is farmable land that we're currently farming berries on, and the rest of it is native natural habitat, along with our wetlands that are untouched. You know, we have a lot of native species, a lot of habitat for the animals and insects to kind of hang out in. Well, I think it's important for everybody to care about it, and um, this is just our way of, of dealing with the issues that surround us. And so um, th th these are things that we can control, and so we've tried to just do the right thing every chance we get. Island Grove's farming and nursery venture proved successful, producing millions of blueberry plants annually. Unfortunately, this abundance came at a time when regional blueberry harvests were bountiful, causing market prices to drop. Faced with thousands of pounds of unsold blueberries, Island Grove Ag Products began searching for a suitable, value-added product. In 2009, customer and veteran winemaker Chase Martin joined Island Grove to form Island Grove Winery. I met Ken uh, in 2006 when I came up here to buy some blueberries from him. 
and that kind of started our relationship. Three or four years later, I heard from Ken, and he said he was interested in possibly doing something with fermenting of the blueberries, that they had some really good extras, and that kind of got the ball rolling. I think because I had met him prior to that, and he knew I was making blueberry wine, I was very passionate about it. And yeah, so I think it was passion. Island Grove Wine Company's 10,000 square foot facility houses four 5,000 gallon tanks that can generate 25,000 bottles of wine at a time. With all the tanks in use, up to half a million bottles can be produced annually. Island Grove wines are made from blueberries grown on the property, harvested by machine, frozen and stored for later use, resulting in zero waste. The blueberry wine uses no grape juice or flavorings and is very low in sulfites. Blueberries are picked in the field. The imperfect berries are pulled out. We put them in 60 gallon drums with a food grade bag. We send them to the freezer just for convenience so that we can make wine throughout the year. We bring back about 90 60 gallon barrels full of blueberries, say 20 to 30,000 pounds. The process from the berry or the cull to the bottle is about 120 days, which is really fast in the wine world. So we're kind of reusing or kind of saving the fruit, I guess. Uh, and it's important, people love that story. When we tell them that we use the seconds, they, everybody gets excited about it. So yeah, it, it feels good to kind of uh, use something that would have possibly gone to waste. Nine additional 1,000 gallon tanks are reserved for still and sparkling wines. Island Grove's distinctive labels that feature fruit, Florida, and the farm to glass story on every bottle were designed by Ken's daughter, Sarah Ashleman. We make a lot of different wine. And so we make sweet wine primarily, but we also make uh, some drier versions. Um, but we use good quality ingredients and we start with really good fruit and that makes great wine. And we always say that around here. We have been working on our marketing to showcase the different things from Florida, the lifestyle in Florida. Highland Grove Wine currently makes 14 blends of wine and four sparkling varieties, with more innovations on the way. So we're always working on new things here. It's kind of exciting. We are working on new ways to enjoy your wine new ways to take it with you. So whether or not it's in a bottle, in a can, in something else, we're always innovating. So we're doing some new stuff. It's exciting. Okay, I've got a, uh... VP of Marketing, Sarah joined the family business in 2012 and handles all the marketing, design, and brand building for the winery. My background and my education was in art and branding, marketing, uh, graphic design, and I worked for quite a while in the toy industry doing different branding and everything for international and national toy brands. It was a lot of fun and a lot of colors and it kind of suits my artistic side. When the winery started and we started the traditional format of our labels, it really rang true to this area, to the farm, to the old house that we have on property that was in our logo. But as we made wine and we were making this really fun fruit wine, we wanted to do something different with the sangria line. And so sangria opened up a new possibility set for us. We did the skull. It's got all the little fruits drawn inside the skull. So everything that's inside the wine is actually in the illustration. And same with the pineapple sangria. There's pineapple, peaches, and mangoes in the illustration of the skull. So we just had a lot of fun with that. Today, Island Grove wine is sold in major chain stores throughout the Southeast. Farming is hard and I don't think the average person always knows how hard it is to farm. The families that farm know how hard it is. Everyone involved in agriculture, from who's selling the tractors to who's planting the crops and who's harvesting it and who's getting it into the stores. It's tough, it's a tough business. A lot of times I, I'm excited when people ask more questions or want to know where their food comes from. Hug a farmer today. Thank a farmer. <laughs> Island Grove is uh, based on sustainability. I mean, the whole idea was based on that blueberry. So it's exciting for us, but we're happy because it's important for everybody. We're a farm, you know? We wanna know that our product is going to a great place 
and that you know we're positive we impact the environment positively god only created one land here and we're stewards of it. We get to come out and play in the dirt and do different things every day. A lot of farmers do the same thing we're doing. The American grower is producing a safe, healthy commodity for the consumer. It's a piece of dirt and if we don't take care of it, it's not going to take care of us. And in the end, you know, we want to be able to preserve this and, and care for our land and what we're growing on it so that one day future generations continue to produce on this land. That's the takeaway is, you know, take care of what you got and it'll take care of you. Well, I think it's very important to, to maintain the ag environment here because especially in Florida, there's so much new construction, there's so much urbanization going on. Farmers are getting squeezed in every direction. So I think it's important for the farmers to realize that. And, and even though farming is not an easy thing, it's, uh, it's necessary.